Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about unique lists and follow flow and how you can actually uh, execute this. You will need custom code for that. It's a very simple custom function, but I'm going to show you how you can apply it uh, and how you can use it. The whole idea is that if you have a list for, let's say, for example, strings, but it could be integer uh, or doubles or whatever list that you have, uh, in my case, is a list of strings, uh, it will actually uh, remove, so to say, duplicates. It will only show you uh, the one strings with uh, unique values. So if I go actually to my Firebase, this is my Firebase database, and you can actually see I'm outputting the username here in my example. I have the, the collection name, it's a user's data, and I have some data over here. So in my case, I have a username with gray uh, 07, and if I go back uh, to my page, you can see the first one is this one, gray, and then let's see the second one. The second one is uh, uh, Jenkins, and then if I go back, down, this one is different, uh, but I have here again Jenkins 46. And you can see over here that I have the same name. So I have Jenkins 46, and here I have Jenkins 46. And if I go back here, I you can actually see that I have only one Jenkins 46. Uh, so this is how it works. Uh, and uh, now I'll actually go and show you how you can actually uh, use that in your code. So let's go, let's switch to Flutterflow. Uh, in Flutterflow, I have this page, uh, which is called uh, distinct list or unique list. It doesn't really matter how you want to call it. And because I actually use API code and Flutterflow, that's why I have two lists. So I forgot to actually mention that the first list is from API Co, and the second one is from Firebase. Of course, you probably use one of the two, but in my case, I wanted to show you how you can do it in both ways. So first things first, uh, in the top, in the scaffold, I actually have my API Co. So my API Co is getting a list of users, and then uh, this is actually, uh, I have the use of users, of course, I'm using in my case I'm using column, but you can use uh, list uh, view, and I'm getting uh, the unique names uh, from this list of view. So in theory, I that's why I have four different queries over here because, like I said, the first one it's uh, API call, and this one is an API call, and this one is from coming from Firebase. And this one is coming from Firebase. So I'm actually going to show you uh, how actually I set it up. But let me just first show you um, the actual code that I use. The code will, of course, will be available uh, in my page, in my GitHub. I will post a link uh, in the description. And then this is the code. It's a very simple code. The whole idea is that you're going to, to get a list of strings. If you want your list to be a list of integers, for example, wherever it says string, you have to basically change it to int. So if you click on the string one and you click Control D, Control D, you can actually change it like that, right? You can change it with integer, and then of course you have to change it on the right side again as well. So you have to change it integer, and here you have to change it with integer. And now you can see that this function will accept and it will output integers if you want to do the same thing for integers. Let's go back because I'm using strings. So let's go back to string and let's change that to string. But you can, like I, like I just showed you, I think you can change it with uh, anything that you want to, like image path or uh, I don't know. JSON is probably not the right format, but it should be a list of something. Uh, and it should be uh, like a, a simple list. Like this will best work with uh, strings and doubles and integer. Uh, 
uh, and image part as well and video part and audio part. Uh, but you have to try the other ones. If you have any questions or if you have anything that is not working, you can let me know in the comments. So this is the code. Like I said, you don't have to change anything in this code. Uh, you just have to set it up on the right side and then write the name uh, of the custom function. As you probably already know that this code, you cannot modify it. And this code, you cannot modify it. Uh, okay, and when you go back to the to the page, uh, the page uh, it's uh, I'm using is this one. And then, uh, like I said, I have the API code. It's a very simple API code uh, which is returning a list of users. Uh, and let me show you uh, the actual API code because I think this is important because if you go over here and if I return the API code, this is what is returning me. So it's returning me a lot of data, but in my case, I will only need to use, uh, I think I'm, I'm using the username. Let me just check that real quickly. Uh, Graham, so I think I'm using, or I'm not sure if I'm using, yeah, I'm using the name actually, not the username, but I'm using the name of every person. And in my case, actually, in this particular um, list that I'm getting from the API code, uh, I don't get double double names, uh, but it will work because I just show you, I, I use the same technique for uh, Firebase and it is actually uh, removing the duplicates uh, names there. But what I, what I want to show you is that when you get this list, uh, if you want to get the list, let's say for the names, for example, the best way you can do it, uh, as I really don't recommend that to doing that, and I explained that in my video, and I explained that in my video, mastering JSON sorting and filtering, uh, that I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not getting the JSON path like that. Uh, and the reason is that uh, I'm, if you want to get the JSON path as the recommendation uh, way, uh, this way you get only the names, for example. Uh, and this would be uh, dollar sign, and then double dots, and then dot, and then name brackets. Uh, and you can actually see it over here. It will be automatic, automatically populated when you click test API code. And then you can actually click on select. And you, if you go to select, you can actually see the actual list and you can name it. In my case, I will name it names. And in this case, I'll actually, uh, I'll actually return all the names uh, out there. But like I said, I will lose all the data. So all the other data that you have over here, I'll actually lose it. So I'll actually query something uh, that I'm not using. I'm only using like, 5% of everything that I'm getting outputted. So that's why if you want to know more about API codes and how you can, how I'm doing it or more, what is my method of doing it or my style of doing it, of getting the data, you definitely watch this video. I explain it there. But in my case, like I said, I'm only getting the names. I only need the names. And when I get the names, uh, this is, uh, first, I need to call the uh, API call. So this is how I'm doing it. And then uh, I have a colon and I have another colon because I have two colons, I have nested colons because I have, like I said, API call and then Firebase. But let's go to the API right now. And then I have, don't you don't have to have, uh, you don't need anything in backend query because we're already having the backend query over here. Uh, and then you can you can actually have the backend query over here as well. It both works. Uh, if you want, you can do it like that. I think if you, uh, I can change it right now uh, because I think it, it looks pre prettier if you have the backend call over here. So I can actually paste it, and I should be able to actually use that. So let me just move the backend call uh, to the same uh, place that I'm using it. So if I go over here, it will actually give me an error right now because the uh, I, I removed the backend code, so that's why it's giving me an error. Uh, but what you want to do actually is when you choose it, uh, when you have your backend code over here, and when you choose your uh, uh, generated document from children, the value for set up the value, and then choose the uh, and choose the 
uh, custom function. And the custom function in my case, it's called unique list. So if I click uh, on the custom function that I'm using, it's only one uh, argument. Uh, and the argument that I need is actually the list of the strings. And in my case, is list of names. So if I click over here, the list of names, this one, you can actually see it on the uh, left side. It's highlighted. If I uh, go with the mouse, I don't click anything. It's highlighted. So I know that this is not the list that I want. Uh, and you can actually see it from the icon as well. This is coming from Firebase. And this is actually an API call. You can actually see the same icons over here. So just in wondering, uh, just if you're wondering. And then I need this one, which you can you don't see it selected because I'm currently selected it. Like I told you, this one, you can see it is selected. That's how you know which one is which. And then if I click the users, and then I need the JSON body, I need the JSON path, and I need the names. I set it up the names, I need the names, no further changes, and click confirm. And here on the value options, no further changes as well, and click confirm here as well. And now I can save it, uh, and then, uh, you can see the error just uh, uh, is gone. And then I can actually do the same thing for, and that was, uh, and then the last thing actually that I did is go, I created a text field. And when I go over here, I have, I can actually go to the uh, name item. I can click on the name item, no for the changes because I'm outputting the names as strings using my, uh, uh, using my custom, Function, so I didn't. I don't need the JSON path over here. This is enough. Uh, this will give me uh, my names, and then I can confirm. And then I go back over here, and then I can actually show you right now. I can show you how I did it uh, using Fire uh, Firebase. And so when you're using Firebase, you can actually see my Firebase data. Like I said, in my case, it's uh, I'm using the data from uh, users data. And those are all my documents. I have like duplicates usernames. You can probably saw that. I'll just go quickly uh, through the username. So you can actually see that they have a lot of like this case, for example, grade seven, grade zero seven, grade zero seven. So they're actually duplicates. This is, those are actually coming from my CSV, um, CSV video import, uh, import documents from CSV or JSON video. If you haven't watched it, it's this one over here, easily sync your CSV and JSON files. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you can watch it and you can see actually how I imported uh, those. Uh, but yeah, this is the data that I'm using. And let's go back uh, to uh, how I set it up. So first of all, uh, I set it up over here in the container. Uh, and I can actually do it the same thing. So I can actually copy this. Uh, and I can remove that from here, and then I can move it uh, to uh, use it in uh, the same uh, widget. In my case, it's in the column widget. So I can click on Add, Paste, uh, the query. And the query is very simple. Uh, it's a query selection, and then I have the user's data, and then I have a list of documents. I don't have any filters. I don't have any ordering. Uh, but of course, you can use filters and ordering. It's up to you. And then I can confirm it. It says that it will create uh, uh, documents from children. Do you agree? And you can say, yes, I agree. Uh, no problem with that. Uh, and in my case, actually, I don't. I the colon will not work. Uh, I will have to use a list uh, view. So the colon works for API call, uh, but it's not working for uh, generated children from, uh, from colon. You have to have a list view. So let's let's do the same thing with the list view. Yeah, fortunately, actually, Flutterflow changed something because it will actually right now generate the children dynamically. You don't need to set up the generation of the children uh, here when you're using it directly in uh, the colon or the list view. That is something new, actually. I this is the first time I see that. Uh, and if you click confirm, it will actually the generate from children, it will be gone. And you can actually go over here and you can set up uh, the item that you're going to use, which in my case, it's user data. It, you, For example, you get the username. But this will actually give you a repetitive um, or duplicated 
uh, usernames. So that's actually not how we want to use that. So if I copy it again, I, I have to use it like the old fashioned way, uh, like I did it uh, at the first time. So I'll do it in the uh, container. I'll add my query in the container. It's a very simple query. It's query selection users data list documents. Like I said, you can use filters and ordering, confirm. And then in the uh, colon, I don't use it over here, like you probably saw why. Uh, and then I have to use it in generated dynamic children. Then I have to click over here and then I have to select my query, which in my case is this one. And I know that this is this one because I can see it over here, it's highlighted. So I select it over here and what I want to take, uh, sorry, of course, I have to select the uh, function first and the function is uh, so when you click on generate uh, generated uh, children click on the value and then click on unique list so click on the unique list and now you have to actually select uh, the values of the user uh, usernames and click on the user data and now you have to map it so we'll map it with what fields we want to get and the field that we want to get its username so I click on username. It's always good to have a default value. If you if you don't have a username, you get a no. So you get a default value. So it will be like default username, for example. Doesn't really matter. And then click confirm. When you click confirm, you get I don't know why it's getting an automatic filter list items. You can just click no for the changes here. Click confirm and then no for the changes here as well. Click Confirm here, and now here you can actually have username from DB, from Firebase, sorry. And then click Confirm, it says it will generate dynamic children. Do you want to do that? Yes, I definitely want to do that. That's why I'm doing that. And then here I can actually get the individual item. And the individual item that you can see, this is the icon from generating children. And you can click it over here. No for the changes, as I am already getting the username that I want to. Click confirm, and now the error should be gone. It is indeed gone. And now I can click on instant reload, and it should wait a little bit. And I'll catch you when this instant reloads. And now this instant reloaded, I can click on the uh, page title and then go down to the distinct. Uh, let's click on it, and now you can actually see I have the same output that I just showed you at the beginning. So uh, that was it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know uh, in the comments below. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, and before you actually go, I want to say that the code will be available uh, in the page. So you can definitely use this page uh, where you can get the code, you can get, you can copy the widgets that I'm using. And there is a video actually how you can use this page uh, and you can change, uh, you can change the data as well. So if you want to change something like the app state name, it's something different uh, and you can actually change it and it will be changed in code as well. So you don't have to mess with codes and change it as inside the code. So thank you very much for watching again and have a nice day. I hope that video was helpful to you.